So this is the last part in my Storm Chimera video. I've finally got these filters that um, took a while to get in a post, uh, so I've now got those on, so it really kind of completes the model and you can finally see what I was on about. Um, so it looks really good. Uh, so I'm now, in this video, just going to talk about all those little bits of extra detail um, that kind of complete the model and make it look much more realistic than the standard Chimera. So, the first thing is the track guards. So the track guards, um, I talked about in the last video, I've just done a few extra little bits here and there. Um, so with these ammo boxes that I had made of green stuff and uh, then done like a little kind of rim all the way around out of plasticard. So I then carried on in the same vein using the same plasticard to create this little uh, lock for the ammo boxes so they're not falling out mid transit. Uh, so what I've done is used a single strip all the way around, obviously, you know, that's multiple bits put together, and then an additional top section just here to make these bits stand out. And then I've uh, used the kind of rivet technique that I talked about before to add in two extra rivets, and then I've used my ever useful, um, like a bit of a brush bristle, so I've kind of created a little hinge effect. So I think... Once that's painted up, that will look quite good and a bit realistic. Um, so the next thing is from the Lehman Russ kit. I've got the spade. That's not much more to say about that. It was quite straightforward. And then another thing from the Lehman Russ kit was the jerry can. So this was a sort of section that I was mimicking from the Forge World um, Scenic Kit that had a kind of destroyed Chimera in and their track guards as well. Um, so there's the jerry can and then there's some plastic card. So I use a plastic card to create this little kind of container for it that went all the way around. I obviously built this separately. I used the jerry can itself as a kind of guide and I was kind of gluing the bits of plastic around the jerry can to keep it all in place rather than build the little kind of container separately and then try and fit the canister in afterwards. Um, I then use the kind of same rivet technique to give it a little bit of extra detail. And then lastly, I've done this extra little latch sort of section. So that's going to be painted up to look like fabric, like a leather strap. And it obviously just goes all the way around and sort of to the bottom and then gets to kind of tucked away behind the jerry can. So for that, I just use some much thinner plastic card. That's the word I'm looking for, much thinner plastic card. Uh, so it actually bends quite easily to give that effect. And then I used a larger rivet that I found. So that one's going to be painted up to be like a gold color to match all the buttons on my grenadiers. So that bit was quite straightforward. Um, and then on the right hand side, I've already talked about the storage container and the last bit was the pickaxe. So again, the pickaxe came from the Lehman Rust kit. So all quite straightforward. On the other tank, it was an almost identical story. So I've got the spade, I've done the lock, and I did the jerry can. But on the right hand side, I didn't want the two tanks to be exactly identical. So I used um, a bit from the engineers, uh, DevCorp engineer guys. So this is one of their backpacks. Just to zoom in on it for you. So you can see it's really detailed. It's got the same kind of pickaxe, um, but a bit smaller. And then it's got some rope and some like um, satchels. Uh, so what I did is I used my plastic card again to create like a little, um, not quite an A-frame, it's more like an H. And then I used some rivets to detail it and then I stuck that down to the tracks and then added this on top so that's all secure so it doesn't look like it's just been stuck on it actually looks like something securing it in place that's just to give it that extra level of realism so that's the track guards and um, one thing i've not talked about before is the door so the door is just the standard Forge World one, so that's a, not the regular plastic one. Forge World do their own little variant. And one thing I liked about this is that it's kind of one whole section that kind of clearly comes down, allowing everyone to like charge out. The plastic version, it has that kind of little functionality where it could all come down, but really it's got a little side hatch that clearly everyone comes out and that's not as impressive. 
I really love the giant Aquila on it as well. One thing that I wasn't too impressed with was that this bit's all quite blank. There's no rivets down here. It sort of feels like it's lacking detail. So I was originally going to put some rivets in there to make, make it just look a bit better, just so it doesn't look so bland. But then I realised when I'm painting it, I'm actually probably, I should put some transfers down. So whether it's going to be tank markings or numbering of some kind, I'm going to do something that will just fill that space there. So once it's painted, it won't look so dead. The other thing I did that I, again, from the Lehman Rust kit, you can just about see it. There's a little mechanism under here. It's hard to get a good view. Actually, let's just flip it up and down. So, as you can see, it kind of looks like a little handle, really. Um, that was on the Lehman Rust kit. I'd seen in the Imperial Armour book, they had done this on one of the Medusas, and it kind of looked quite nifty. I'm still not technically sure what it is. It looks, it just makes it look good. And it also makes this section, so once it's down on the table, obviously you can't see it here, but when the light's gonna be on it, you're just gonna catch it, and it's gonna give it that little bit of extra detail that you wouldn't normally see, and it will kind of help make this section look less boring. So it's like, it was actually slightly bigger, the plastic version, and it just needed trimming down to sort of make it fit in there. So who knows what it does, if anyone has an idea or clue what the Forge World guys were doing when they stuck it down there, um, let me know. So that's it for that section. I've then done some extra detailing on the bulldozer blades. Let's go through that. So, first thing you might notice is some wiring that I did. Again, this was a technique I learned on the Imperial Armour book. That's uh, the Masterclass number one painting book, not the kind of rule books. Um, so I just kind of drilled in some holes on either side and managed to bend my bristles around. Now, I keep talking about these and you might be wondering what on earth I'm going on about. So, this is my little brush, obviously for washing dishes and stuff. These are super flexible and obviously you want to do this with a clean brush, but you can actually, I don't think you can do it with your fingers. I tend to get a kind of little tool and I, it kind of helps me just get some grip and you can pull these right out because the, the way the brushes work is the bristles kind of go in and then out again. So pulling out one will kind of double that length and then you just need to cut it off where it bends. So that's super useful. It's really good for their aerials. It means nothing's gonna snap off because they're just super durable. They might get a little bit bent, but I don't think that's too much of an issue. So I've done it here just to add a little bit of extra detail. As you can see though, you barely notice it once it's locked in place. It's just gonna be a really kind of subtle little thing you might occasionally just spot and notice. And it's, I quite like it. It's like a nice little touch I don't think anyone but me is going to notice it. So a few extra little bits of detail that I applied was adding some uh, two rivets to the bottom and one to the top of the sides because this is just quite um, smooth and plain. Let me try and get the camera to focus so that's a bit better. Um, so otherwise it just looks a bit smooth and plain. <sighs> I'm still not too happy about my bit but it didn't take forever to get off. Like, And there's a big mold line going all the way up. You meant to keep it there? I'm not too sure. Um, so things like this really annoy me about plastic kits that you don't really get with resin. So uh, I've tried to do my best job and then it gets to point where like, that, that'll do. Once it's painted, I can kind of hopefully hide any of these blemishes that might still be visible with just a bit of battle damage. And um, so I'm digressing. So two rivets uh, on the bottom, one on the top. I did that again on the other side to match it up. And then I did a similar thing along the top there you go. Um, so what I did is I made sure I did basically every other one. I didn't have enough like rivets to go around to completely match it. So I thought that would be more than enough. So that's the bulldozer. So next is the auto cannon turret. So this is the Forge World version that I picked up from there. I, first thing I did was drill in and add in the aerial. So most people don't seem to realize that these little like nodules on tanks uh, are for aerials. And what you're meant to do is just drill them out and put a bit of flexible wire in. Seems to be something quite overlooked. It's obviously not important if you don't do that, but I think it's just a nice little touch. 
don't go too crazy on the length of these you don't want them really massive because you know they could snap off if you bend it too much they are pretty flexible and robust but don't go crazy with them I then decided to add on some track guard. So this was another idea that I stole from Imperial Armour Moth Class Volume 1. Um, I should get some money for promoting them so much, um, but I really can't rate that book enough. It's really useful. Um, so again, this was another idea I stole from there. It basically involves taking a single piece of track, which I had plenty spare of because when I was building this, um, all of that doesn't have track on it anymore. So I've got all that spare. Um, so I took a single piece of track, I drilled out some holes on the bottom section and the top section. Uh, as you can see here, it almost looks like it's being split. So that's because when I was pushing this plastic bit of rod through, um, the hole isn't quite as centre as it could be. Let's try and zoom in on that. So it's not quite centre, it's slightly more to the right. So I had to eyeball that and I got it slightly wrong. Um, but what will happen is once this is painted up, it will actually look perfectly fine. Yeah, I don't think it's um, distorted it, it's just because it's quite thin. So I'll be okay on that one. Um, then what you want to do is you want to mount this to the turret and to do that you need a little hook, which I've used a bit of plastic card. Ideally in a kind of ideal world, you would use a bit of brass, um, like etched brass, like really thin, that's um, Quite durable you can bend it and it will stay in shape the plastic card I managed to achieve that same effect just by um, using a bit of super glue so if I can zoom in you can see a bit better it's slightly it's been super glued in place but the plastic card itself is quite flexible and small so that, that kind of worked really well I was also gonna add uh, I was thinking about adding some transfers when I'm painting this and that's one thing to bear in mind when you're doing a, the kind of the model section so like where do you want transfers to go? Do you want a high detail? Do you want to get rid of bits to make room? So on most of my tanks, I've got kind of transfers that will appear on the side, so say down here, and then one transfer at the top on a turret. Uh, but to do that, I kind of measured it up. I took, I'd already kind of cut one of the transfers out and pl just placed it on here to see if it would even fit. And it kind of just about fitted on, but what I would have to do is actually kind of cut this little notch off and obviously that is a notch that I used on this side to mount the hook uh, and it's a nice little touch of detail that I wasn't wasn't willing to get rid of because I thought it would look a bit too flat even with the transfer on there so I was like I just have a transfer numbering on the tank itself and keep this bit just as is so the next turret is the slightly more interesting one so this contains the Grenadier crew equipment um, just to give it feel like these tanks are a bit more lived in. So I took a bedroll pack that was from the plastic Lehman Rust kit, which I seem to have used quite a lot. That kit's quite useful for lots of little tank spares. What I then did is I added on a helmet of the Grenadiers. So I obviously used a Grenadier helmet to kind of keep it quite accurate rather than using someone else's. Um, this did mean I had to sacrifice a model. Uh, luckily though, I had bought four um, packs of the special weapon guys. So in the special weapon kit, you get one melter and one heavy stubber. My plan is to run a list with um, two melters in each team. So I've got lots of anti-tank support, um, but it meant I had two heavy stubber guys, well, four in total, two for each team. Um, so I had four heavy stubber guys that I'm not using at all. Um, I'm still painting them up, um, but I thought four was too many. I don't really need, I'm never going to use that many heavy stubbers in these guys based on how they kind of operate and what their special, speciality is. So I basically thought I'd butcher one of them, chop his head off with a saw, and then had to carefully scrape out the inside of the helmet so um, that bit just didn't have a bit of head in it. It required just a bit of knife work. And what you want is to make sure, because as you can see here, it feels like this helmet is kind of sitting on it, but it's just not like sitting flat on it as if there's still something inside it makes it look empty. So that's all I had to do with that one. There's not too much extra to talk about. Um, so in terms of this filter, I've just literally stuck that on. It kind of looks good. I was thinking realistically, if you want to match the Lehman Rust kit and the super heavy kits, 
these filters need to sort of sink down into the ground. Um, the downside of doing that would mean I'd have to drill all of this out. I would have this kind of join section not, not joining to anything because this is meant to spin around freely. So that wouldn't quite work. And I actually really like this kind of little detail here going all the way around the bottom. So I decided it looks like it sticks out a little too high for what it should be, but I don't think it would work as well getting rid of it all. So it kind of like a happy little compromise. Um, and again, adding in the little aerial just on there on that second one. So you've got two aerials matching up. And um, I think that's it for the two tanks. Ah, one last thing you might have noticed, I stuck on the track. I'm not too sure I mentioned this before. So with the two track pieces, uh, normally I would uh, attach the track on afterwards. So in terms of painting, you kind of, you're spraying the whole tank gray, and then you can spray the track pretty much on the sprue still black, and then dry brush it and paint it all up there, and then glue them on afterwards. The only problem is I kind of did a test fit with the track stuck down with track guard on, on the actual track, if that makes sense. Um, you couldn't fit uh, this little bit of track inside. What you have to do is put the track down first and then glue this down. So I just decided, oh, what the hell, I'll just glue all the track on. What I'll do in the painting stage is I'll mask that off so it won't be too painful to have to repaint. So one little bit of extra detail I did was on these magnetized weapons. So if I do a little close up view, you can see that little skull. So that skull didn't actually exist on the Chimera kit version. Um, it does appear on, I don't think it's the Lehman Russ version. I think it appears on the Super Heavy Bane Blade kit on the Twin Linked Flamers. And I saw them and I really liked them. So what I did is I found the Storm Bolter, and the Storm Bolter I think was from the Chimera kit. And on the side of the Storm Bolter was these little skulls. So I just kind of carefully with a knife peeled it off and then super glued it on. I then did it on both sides to keep it even and matching. So that just adds a really nice, quite subtle touch to the Heavy Flamer. I then did something similar on the heavy bolter, not with skulls though, um, it was just adding in extra rivets. So this looked a bit plain on its own. I had uh, drilled out like all good hobbyists, the heavy bolter hole, as you can see there, goes all the way through, um, and then added in these two extra rivets. So if you look at some of the other heavy bolters, they have it. Some of them have even more in different sections like at the back, but this is covered up by the, I guess, like tarpaulin style covering. So I thought I'd add those two in there using the same kind of rivet technique that I talked about through this whole series. So I won't go over that again. So that just adds a nice little bit of extra detail onto those heavy bolters and the heavy flamers. The last bit I want to talk about is something I didn't actually do. Um, so one thing I've been trying to do throughout the whole uh, series in trying to build these storm mirrors, I wanted them to be as kind of WYSIWYG as possible. I want them to follow the rules. So for example, if there's an auto cannon, boom, got the auto cannon. It's got track guards, boom, it's got track guards. It doesn't have the laser array, so I've taken off the laser array. Uh, one thing extra in the rules though is it has extra armor and um, so the extra armor you're meant to use side armor and I actually do have side armor this is the extra armor kit from Forge World it's now out of production but I picked it up last year um, and the way it works is let me try and describe this as best as possible um, so this little section here goes and matches with the old Chimera kit on the old Chimera kit, you have this side panel here. This is actually separate from this bottom section. So you're left with like a big gaping hole. On the current kit that I have, this is all one big piece. Um, yay for Games Workshop to kind of making much simpler kits. Um, but the downside is this doesn't quite match up anymore. So if I just kind of place it on there to show you sort of what it would look like, there's a big gap 
going all the way around and I guess the side view on the back is going to kind of illustrate it the best. So this is meant to like fit in but it obviously doesn't so you get all this massive gappage. So I had two options, one to carefully cut this off and I wasn't willing to do that. The other option is to trim all of this bottom resin off uh, and that is a real pain in the arse and I didn't really want to do that either. And I kind of spent a lot of time doing this going, hmm, I just don't like it. I think this bit of uh, design, a bit like the old school track guards that I butchered, it's just, it just doesn't stand up to the kind of modern design that Forge World or even Games Workshop do. So I don't like these, I'm, I'm just going to put them to one side and leave them off. So in terms of my WYSIWYG gameplay, I don't think it's too much of an omission to not have it. You could logically argue that kind of by sealing these lasgun holes, you've kind of added in some extra armour on there and you know other bits and bobs like the rear door it looks much more sturdy than the regular one so i don't think anyone's going to particularly call me on it but these were sort of the reasonings that i was going through my head to try and justify myself not using those um, side panels so there are my two completed uh, storm chimeras all ready to be painted it's been really enjoyable doing these uh, videos for you and it has been making the storm chimeras themselves um, it's taken me a good few months, I would say, to get to this stage. Um, I have one month left to paint everything up in time for my Battle Brothers tournament in Nottingham. So what I'm going to do is one more video um, talking about a painting guide on these tanks, um, and that will be to a sort of decent tabletop standard. So I'll make sure, fingers crossed if I have time, that they have transfers on and be weathered. And then I'll do a kind of more advanced video much later on when I get loads of spare time to work on these and I'll be doing like rain streaks effects and like mud and those kind of general things so that would be one to look out for um, so if you've enjoyed these videos uh, please rate and subscribe to them um, if you're going to follow these videos and make your own storm chimeras please like post up some photos or let me know where I could see them that'd be really great to see um, let me know what you thought on my techniques, um, if there's any improvements or kind of different ways you would have done it. Um, do let me know. I'm always open and up for constructive <laughs> criticism rather than just plain old trolling. Um, so uh, please let me know your thoughts um, and good luck. Keep watching and hopefully you'll see me soon.